Dr. Long, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning to you guys. It's already been an eventful morning. <laughs> Hasn't We've it? got cheesecake in the fridge. We've got the Admiral giving out $100 bills. So I don't think I can top this. But. No. Yeah. Let's, let's don't carry that story too far. <laughs> they, don't, they don't make a bill bigger than 100 anymore, so you can't really top that. Unless you want to give away two at a time, Tyler, which... Well, I'm I'm running with the story as soon as I leave here. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, you're looking very Christmassy today too. I appreciate and that your was customers. the plan. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. Good stuff. Now you are Jackie and Ron Long's son. I am, and apparently my dad brings items out here for you. Your, your dad's sole wish in life is to give me diabetes and tooth decay. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. So <laughs> he he sends in some sweets, buddy. Let me tell you that. Yeah. And it's very much appreciated. So they don't, apparently they don't he, go to waste. Apparently he does that for you and also my dentist as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> he bought stock in your dentist. Yeah. I guess, right? yeah. Absolutely. Well, Tyler, tell us about the Cares Academy because before your mom texted me about it, I really didn't know a whole lot about it. Yeah. So the Cares Academy. Um, Um, I have heard you guys uh, read it in the newspaper. You hear it nationwide about the poor test scores, whether in Berkeley County, West Virginia, the nation in general. Um, We've got to bring the focus back to academics in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And we have been planning this for about a year and a half. Who's we? Well, a core group of principals, Mm -hmm. um, plus uh, Mr. Lewis Mullinax in the board office, uh, assistant superintendent, Tana Burkhart, okay. and then, of course, Superintendent Ron Stevens. Um, the CARES Academy, what it is, is it's a district-wide approach to handle the discipline issues that we're having at the kindergarten through fifth grade levels in Berkeley County Schools. Mm-hmm. Um, the CARES Academy, it's an option for a small group of students to come to the CARES Academy and um, receive interventions in social and emotional skills, obviously behavior interventions and then of course academics because we are uh, we are a school um what it is is um our goal is to decrease the behavior of the individual student which ultimately impacts that entire classroom Mm -hmm. thus giving the teacher the ability to reach those students and those those students the ability to get their max education every day so in tyler long terms here's how i see it we want to take that one student out of the classroom who's causing chaos for 20 to 25 other students we want to bring them to the cares academy we want to of course educate them and then we want to reteach their behaviors and then we want to get their social skills up to par because a lot of these students don't know how to make friends, don't Mm -hmm. know how to interact socially. Now, simultaneously for that nine weeks while we're doing that, that classroom, that teacher has a stress-free environment without any behavior problems and she's maximizing that education. Mm -hmm. So the way we feel we can do that over time is that's like a 20 to one ratio. So if we are servicing 20 to 50 students every year, we're impacting in a roundabout way 400 to 1,000 students every year, and we hope that we can get our test scores up because of that and that we can increase our academics because Mm -hmm. of that. We've got to get these behaviors under control. Yeah, this is the way it was for the longest time when we were all kids many years ago, right? If you were a disruptive student in the classroom, you were removed. When did that stop happening? I would say some time ago. Um, I've been in the system for 22 years. Um, That has not been how it's been, at least at the elementary level, Mm -hmm. for some time. The secondary has a transitional school. Um, That is not what this is. This is a tier three intervention. Um, As we were talking about prior to the show, this is really the step before a special education behavior disorders referral, and that's not even necessary to the process, Um, but it is an intervention we are not the ultimate destination. We mm-hmm. are a cog in the in the road. I'll stop stop, along, stop the along the way. Yeah. Bill? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tyler, I'm, uh, how does the program work? Uh, instead of going to the regular classroom during these nine weeks, does the student go to a separate building, separate classroom, uh, or, do, or is this after school, after hours program? Yeah. Is it during, what is it? Great question. So it is housed at Tuscarora Elementary okay. School, which... 
if anybody's familiar with the area, is Caddy Corner, basically from City Hospital yeah. or WVU Medical yeah. Center, whatever they call it now. Um, right now, it's a pilot program, so we have two classrooms. We have one for our primary students, kindergarten, first and second grade. Then we have another one for our intermediate students, grades three, four, and five. Each classroom has a teacher. Each classroom has a teacher's assistant. And then we have a roving teacher's assistant who goes wherever the issue may yeah. be. Most importantly, though, the program has a social worker. So a lot of these kids have trauma in their lives that yeah. you or and I wouldn't even think about. But excuse me, let me go back to the question. Mm -hmm. uh, the CARES Academy, a student that is disruptive, uh, he goes into the program for nine weeks. Yes. Uh, but during those nine weeks, does he? Is this an after-school program or is it during no, it's, school? No, it's during school. During they school. are okay. actually housed. Okay. So so how it works is they still stay on. Let's say they are from a Peckin Elementary sure. School. They they still stay on the roster of a Peckin Elementary School. The county hasn't found a way with all the technology and stuff to make it so they're actually a CARES Academy student. Mm -hmm. um, but they would be on the home roster of a Peckin Elementary School, but they would come to the CARES Academy okay. during the day. Here's what happens. The day before they come, I go over to a Peckin Elementary School. I get all their textbooks. I get all their technology. I get all their logins. And my goal is, from an academic standpoint, we take everything that they were doing at a Peckin Elementary School, we bring it over to the CARES Academy. We teach them from, obviously, a modified, yeah. you know, they're not in a class of 20 anymore, so we kind of have to modify things. They're in a class of three, four, yeah. five kids. Yeah. And then we just seamlessly transition back over a course of nine weeks and will the uh, will the county transport them to and from yeah great okay. question so parents don't have to transport at all we do things called we do things through uh, varsity sports mm -hmm. so I set it up with Berkeley County Schools uh, transportation and then they set things up through varsity sports they come right to the parents front door okay Tyler now just caution you don't don't tell Bill his questions are great because if you do that, he's going to believe that. Okay. And he'll just keep, keep asking. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to sit higher and higher up in my chair. <laughs> Michael Hank. <clears throat> well, so I, we talk about, you know, when did these problems arise? And, and I, I wonder, I'd like to see a study done about mm -hmm. when they did arise. I, I wonder if it had anything to do with the whole No Child Left Behind, mm -hmm. um, the advent of that. And, you know, I know back when we were going to school there was also corporal punishment at that time as well so mm -hmm. you know that deterred a lot of bad behavior but obviously you can't have that anymore and i'm not advocating for corporal right. punishment um but so you have to find a different way to to interact with these kids i don't know that they're any worse now than they were back then we right. just handled a little bit different right. so you know what how do you handle with it when you get them into the cares mm -hmm. academy what is it that you do to try to modify their behavior Okay, so a couple of things that we do behavior-wise. First of all, I believe in consequences for everything. There are consequences when we step out of line and as adults. There have to be consequences. So I do have the ability, just like at a regular school, to give in-school suspension, to give out a school suspension. Um, so there's that. I haven't had to do that yet mainly because I do believe we do small group instruction. So if you really mess up in a class of two, three, four kids, it, it's – it's kind of difficult to do that. So there's that. But the biggest thing we do, as I was saying earlier, is for kids this age, you really have to reteach the behaviors. So it's consequences, but it's reteaching the behaviors. A lot of these kids, they're five, six, seven years old. I can punish Rob, but if Rob has no clue what he's done wrong, what's the point? So. What we try to do is give them lessons and reteaching. All right, Rob, you did this. What were you feeling? Why did you do this? All right, that's great. Now, let's talk about what you should have done and why we should have done this. And we just, we kind of educate while we're giving the consequence. What happens after the nine weeks? So, great question. Out on the street, Bill. <laughs> How'd you go? Start working, buddy. Seven's not too young. <laughs> Our paying taxes. <laughs> he could go to the legislature. <laughs> well, well, not out on the street or to the legislature. Um, but um, <laughs> they do go back to their home school, so they have two options. Um, option A is they've made great progress. And honestly, and I can talk about this later, we have some students who have made awesome progress. 
first of all, many of these kids came here acting out every single day. Um, they haven't done anything. So they're obviously going to graduate the program with flying colors. There are other students, unfortunately, I'm sure, who, who won't. Um, and I don't believe we have on those yet, but who won't um, graduate the program. So at the end of nine weeks, um, they'll go back to their home school. They will be referred over to their school student assistance team. Typically, those student assistance teams will meet and determine what's best for the student. Many times that will be um, a referral to the um, the behavior disorders classroom within um, that school or uh, a partner school like that. And, and unfortunately, that's just a consequence. As I was saying earlier, when I meet with the parents, I kind of talk to them about this is a fork in the road for, the, for their students. You know, they can go right and they can kind of change their life even at an early age here, or they can go left and they can continue. Because what happens is even at this early age with behavior, these kids get so far behind academically because they're constantly out of the classroom. You know, when you're suspended 20, 30 days a year for gosh knows, yeah. you know, think about how far you get behind. You mentioned parents, two questions. Mm -hmm. One, do the parents, do you require the parents' yes. approval to go yes. into the program? Yep. And then the second question is, how well do the parents receive the program? Okay, <clears throat> great questions. So, Good, Rob. <laughs> this guy, this guy does have great I questions. told you not to start that time. <laughs> and can you imagine how he's going to be when he's hopped up on cheesecake later? <laughs> I think Tyler wants some of those business cards before the end of the day. Yeah. But I think. Well, he's actually already slid a couple over to me. That's the problem. God bless. <laughs> okay, so your questions. Great question, by the way, Rob. <laughs> Okay. So, your questions. What were they again? <laughs> and that's how this show works, ladies and gentlemen. How have the parents received the program? Uh, yeah, okay, right, yeah. so the parents have received the program actually really well. I was unsure about that, honestly, mm -hmm. because, you know, nobody likes to hear like, little Rob has been off the chain in school or had sure. a horrible school year. Um, every program I've met, every parent I've met with has been very receptive. In fact, at least three of the parents have thought and heard in advance about the Karis Academy and wanted their student in the program. That's great. So that is great. Now, parents are a key component of anything you do, whether it's me as a school, me as the Karis Academy, or you, I believe you're a coach or were a coach, I'm, correct? I'm still, yeah. Okay, if you don't have parent buy-in, you have absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I do is before they can get into the Karis Academy, um, and I checked this out with the legal department of Berkeley County Schools, I require them to sign a contract. One of the things that's in that contract, it says that upon them, so they have to come to parent meetings every Friday, face-to-face. -face. We don't do virtual, it is face-to-face. -face. Upon them missing the second meeting, their son or daughter is out of the Karis Academy. Mm. That might sound like, oh, that's so awful, but ultimately, your son or daughter is in this program for nine weeks. It can change the momentum of their educational career. I think you need to be there for those 30 minutes. Now, this is from K to five. Yes. Do you find that the, uh, uh, the success better at the younger age or set the K, K level as opposed to five level? Um, so we just, I can't really totally speak to that because Right but now. it was a good question. It was, <laughs> not, not great, but good. Well, You're it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great one because <laughs> the, the students who are in the program right now are at various levels. Yeah. So um, no one has completed the program yet. Um, they're coming up on completing it. So I can't yeah. really sure. answer about the success level. Okay. You know, I'm sort of surprised that I, I'd, I'd always heard that, that – kids are worst when they get into junior high and mm -hmm. high and it seems like you're sort of attacking the pro, pro uh, the problem at, at the k to five mm -hmm. level way before they get to that so is it is it your hope that you curb these behaviors way before they they get to that level and i would also think that you know the parent buy-in parents already know what their kids are like yeah. so I, I can see why there would be parent buy-in because they're it, they may be at their wits end as well yeah yeah and a lot of these parents are at their their wits end you know you do have that occasional parent just in the school system who says you know well not my son or daughter they don't mm -hmm. do that or they don't mm -hmm. act like that but all of my parents so far have have been you know bill um 
I don't know what to do with him. You yeah. know, he does X, Y, and Z. He does this at home. You know, please help me. If this can help him for nine weeks and we can better him, then I'm all up for it. Um, so there is that. Yes, things do get crazy in the middle school uh, grade level. I've heard that from my friends who are middle school principals. I can remember when I was a middle school student, so it's a hectic time. But there are behavior problems mm -hmm. in our elementary schools. Um, the behavior problems we see at our elementary schools are probably a little different than you would see in middle school. Um, you do see some acts of aggression. Um, towards peers and towards staff, you do see a lot of defiance, you know, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Um, and you do see a lot of running, running from the classroom, trying to run from the building. Um, as I said, these were happening almost every day at the home school, and these rarely happen now. Um, so you, this is the first year. This is the program. first year. And the first class, and yes. you have how many? In so right now we have five. And aspirations are? Aspirations are for 20 students, okay, at a, at a time. So mm -hmm. students circle, cycle out of this pro, in and out of this program. So my aspirations, and I know what will happen, we will, we will fill the program with 20. And then I believe we'll have about 50 students total in the program when all is said and done throughout the year. And as, as, as I was saying, I think this program is twofold. Number one, you're helping those students, but most importantly, you're also helping all those students that those students interact with. And I think that is a big part of that. And I think that's what the community and the educators have to think about. Well, that's, a, that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, and it affects so many, so mm -hmm. many kids down the line too. I, I, uh, they, they, I'm sorry, go, so, sorry, excuse me, Rob, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Tyler, so what differentiates a kid who's kind of an issue in class compared to a kid who's going to get sent to the cares academy okay well where do you step over the line well great question ralph uh, thank you, Tom. <laughs> so i don't like to brag but i will on occasion ask a great question so um everything for the cares academy is data driven we would never take uh anything from opinion mm -hmm. you know um you couldn't call me and say hey i've got uh uh, Bill, and we're going to refer him, and he's an awful kid, you know, or he does X, Y, and Z. Everything is data driven. So it's a process, and it takes typically about 20 to 30 school days, sometimes as many as 50 school days to complete that process. Mm -hmm. So you have to have tried and true interventions in place at the tier one and tier two level before they even come to me and i have a committee of principals five principals plus myself and we meet within 48 hours we meet over uh teams much kind of mm -hmm. a simple similar idea to what you guys have mm -hmm. and um we vote yay or nay to have students um come into the academy um 85 percent of the time we do vote yay um and when we do vote nay it's because there's been a paperwork issue we are tried and true, true to the process we don't bend the process for anyone we um decided when this process was created we would follow it with fidelity um you know straight 100 percent to the core and that's what we do i assume uh tyler this is uh this program is in is in effect other places have you modeled it after another another school so or? we've not necessarily modeled it after other schools but it is in uh, other yeah. counties it is in yeah. effect in other places um i do know it's in effect in uh Montegalia county but i will tell you one thing that separates theirs from ours and maybe in a more unique way is of course they have tie in with wvu mm -hmm. and they can use college students and college resources and, and we don't have that tie in um obviously maybe we could eventually tie in with shepherd one day or something mm -hmm. but shepherd compared to wvu is i believe probably apples and oranges and that's no offense to shepherd i mean but you're just talking about a a, a major powerhouse uh, D1 school, and you're talking about a local university, um, but yes, yeah, so theirs is theirs is drastically different. There, but similar concept. Yeah, similar concept. There are, um, we have a lot of educators and former educators who listen to this program, and I'm reading a lot of the comments here from people who uh, have been involved in situations you're talking about, Tyler, where there have been behavioral issues in the classroom. This mm -hmm. is this is a big issue in Berkeley County. It's kind of been an underground issue when we talk about education. We very I uh, rarely get into the behavior issues in a classroom. Well, for some reason, Rob, it's the issue no one wants to talk about, yeah. and I don't understand it, because I've talked about it for 
eight, I've been a principal for eight years. I've been an admin for 12 years and I've been in education for 21, 22 years. It's been around for that long. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, everyone wants to harp on the academic test scores, but they really need to see what happens in a classroom. And that's no, that's nothing bad on Berkeley County Schools. That's nothing bad on the West Virginia Department of Education. That's just facts. And I'm mm -hmm. sure I have relatives in Massachusetts. I'm sure this happens there. I mean, I just think it's the society we live in, unfortunately. Will there be a need for a separate transitional academy where kids who can't complete the CARES Academy will then be sent to? So there is no need for that at this time. Um, and I want to I want to speak to the future of that, but I kind of really have to stay political with that because obviously that is for the Board of Education and that is for my boss, Superintendent Stevens. But I do think that this there's a huge need for this in Berkeley County. There's a huge need for this in probably many areas across the state. Mm -hmm. um, I do think this is going to grow. I do want this to grow and I hope to grow with it. Um, my goal is for this to double in size every year. Um, but that is, of course, my goal. That may not necessarily be their goal. So, um, but yes. Will the CARES Academy need its own facility at some point? I don't see how it wouldn't. But again, I can't speak to that. Um, it's currently housed at Tuscarora Elementary School. I don't see how we wouldn't grow out of Tuscarora Elementary School. But again, that's just my vision of things. Maybe I'm being too... Um, I don't know the word, but maybe I'm being too. Yeah. Well, I, here, here's the thing. I mean, you look around the county and you see these uh, pop-up trailers behind uh -huh. every school. So obviously the schools are over capacity right yeah. now and we're going to need more buildings. And if, if you're going to do a program like this and this program is going to grow, uh, um, then you're, I would think you would obviously need a building at some point as well, um, especially if this is a successful program, which I hope it is. Yeah. Um, we, this is something we really need to attack because it is about the learning and you have to get the disruptive kids kids out of those classrooms so that the, the rest of the kids can learn and hopefully change their behavior so they can come back into the classroom and learn as well. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I care about my CARES kids, no pun intended, mm -hmm. but I also care about the other kids. You know, I sure. want, that's just like in my elementary school. Um, I want all these kids to be successful. And if I can have a kid in CARES and at the same time, his homeschool have those other 20 to 25 kids get a great education. I mean, that's a win-win. And also, the word I was looking for is visionary. Maybe I mean too much of a visionary there. <laughs> Bill, you should have helped him out on that. I was he's, going to. He's giving you a lot of compliments I, this morning. Yeah, I know, but I was trying to frame another great question, and I was so involved in thinking about that. I thought you were going to say I was trying to figure out how to pronounce visionary. Yeah, well, no. I'll yeah, tell you what, you're, yeah. you're not too much of a visionary. This is a good vision to have. Yeah, so is, yeah. absolutely uh, continue with what you're trying to do. Thank you. This I appreciate that. Now, what does CARES stand for in this Well, case? that's a great question. Oh, no, <laughs> that and I took the time to write that down. CARE stands for Collaborative Action Response for Educational Success. Very nice. Good. Yeah, I like CARES better. <laughs> yeah, it rolls off the, rolls does, off the tongue a little better, yeah. doesn't it? Tyler, thanks so much for yeah. coming in. Thank this you, guys. This was awesome. Informative. Awesome. Very, very Thank good. you, guys. Make sure you get your Bill business card on the way out the door. <laughs> I will, with the hunter. <laughs>